So we're going to go back to this idea of scale factor that we can make things larger or smaller by multiplying by the scale factor. And the question we're answering today is how can I use scale factor to find the missing value in a proportion? I want you to notice I've set up my page kind of like Cornell Notes where there's going to be room on the left side to ask questions and the notes are going to go here in the middle. I already started this with a proportion is two equal ratios. That's the definition of a proportion. It has two equal, and there are, is an equal sign in the proportion, ratios. So here's an example of a proportion. It's always going to look set up like this, where I have one ratio is equal to another ratio. 3 over 5 would be equal to 12 over 20. And remember when we first started talking about this, I reminded you that everything you know about equivalent fractions is true with equivalent ratios as well. What did it got multiplied by 3 to get us to 12? 4. And also 5 got multiplied by 4 to get us to 20, right? So this is equal because 3 times 4 equals 12, and 5 times 4 equals 20. And those are all ratios that look like fractions. This fraction here in the middle, this 4 over 4, is our scale factor. It's how much larger the second ratio is. So let's take a couple more notes here. We're just going to write out what we just talked about or what I just mentioned here. The scale factor is 4. Because its value In other words, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 4. And I'm going to have you guys draw kind of a map. There is a equation we can write to find scale factor when we don't know what it is. When we looked at this one, you guys know the math facts that 5 times 4 is 20 and 3 times 4 is 12. That's pretty simple. But sometimes, as we saw when we practiced our proportions the other day, it might be decimals or numbers that are not familiar math facts, right? So the scale factor is new divided by old. So if I go back up to this example here, this is our new number because that's what we ended up with after we multiplied, right? What's our new number here? 20 divided by the old number is 5. What is 20 divided by 5? 4. And I want us to try this with a problem that we were looking at yesterday in your math book. Could you guys turn back to page 23?
if we know one piece of information from the new and a piece from the old, we can find the scale factor. And if you guys recall, making the recipes where we were looking at the ice cream yesterday was kind of easy because we were just multiplying by four, multiplying by six. This one I gave you as a challenge, and some people struggled with it because it was harder to shrink it, wasn't it? So let's take a look here. What do we know about the new? How many total brownies did we want to make? 16. Okay, let's write our ratio map again. New divided by what? Old. Is going to give us our scale factor. So let's write that in here. New divided by old. What's the new? 16. And what's the old? 24. That's not going to be a whole number. It's going to be a decimal, right? So let's try that. I have a calculator, so I'll just do it up here real quick. 16 divided by 24. Do you see the decimal I'm getting? It's kind of hard to see. It's, it's 6 repeating itself. So it equals 0 0.6 over and over and over again. So if I take any of these things up here, like if I want it, I was really confused by the eggs. There's four eggs here. And we really need to do like two thirds of this recipe to get 16 brownies. How do I do two thirds of four eggs? Because eggs are like whole things, right? The butter is easy. I can just cut it into whatever pieces I want. But what about those eggs? Well, if we know our scale factor is this, this is how we would find it out. Four times 0 0.6. and I'm getting 2.4. Who's ever tried to cook with an egg? Me. I can crack two whole eggs, that's pretty easy. Is it easy to come up with half of an egg? No. Or 0.4 of an egg? No. No, I think this recipe would be kind of challenging to cut down the way that they wanted us to. And if I put three whole eggs in there, is it gonna be the same? No. No, but this would be how we'd find out. And do you remember yesterday we talked about you could make the whole recipe and just eat eight brownies before your friends show up and then not feel good? You could also like make the whole recipe and save extra brownies to put in your lunch the next week, right? Sometimes when you're doing real life cooking like this, you start doing the math and you're like, I need to just make the whole recipe. Because I can't use three eggs, it would be too much. And I can't do 2.4 eggs easily, right? Okay, but what the question was, was how should you change the recipe, not can you change the recipe, right? And we could use scale factor to do that by taking the new and dividing by the old. So we're going to take that idea, again, and we're going to turn to today's activity. I want you guys to look at page 25. And today we're looking at juice concentrates. Who's ever made juice from like the frozen concentrate and added the water to it? If you add too much water to it, some, like if you start miscount and it gets too watery, right? Those are ratios that you're working with. Let's look at the recipe for these two kinds. Look, there's a recipe one, recipe two. Recipe one is three cups of concentrate for every seven cups of water. This must be making it for a lot of people because that's a lot of juice, right? And look right here at this. It's saying one batch is three cups, two, seven cups. The second recipe is two cups of concentrate for every five cups of water. There's a couple ways we could do this. We can take and double this. How much would it be to be two batches? What's double the three? and double the seven. And we could use scale factor on this. We could take the new 14 and divide it by the old seven. And what would 14 divided by seven be? Two. 
Well, that makes sense because it's two batches, right? Mm -hmm. Can you use these numbers and these numbers to complete the rest of this table? Yeah. And then this table. And then with a partner, I want you guys to try working on this one. You may not need to use scale factor because the numbers there might help you find them, okay? And then I'd like you to turn the page and with your partner, that's the person you're sitting next to, and with you guys, that's all three of you, I'd like you to turn the page and also work on three, four, and five. 